Hello and welcome! In today's video, I'll be showing you how to take advantage of Visual Studios to make your debugging experience better. Unity is a great program, but like all things, has its fallbacks. One of them being, Unity does not serialize properties very well. Of course, you can use things like serialize field to make private variables show up within your inspector. Or you can even go here, click debug to show all of your private variables without needing to have a serialize field. But what if you want to see an object on the stack? Now, if you don't know what the stack in the heap is, the stack is used for short term storage of small pieces of data and the heap is used for longer term storage and larger pieces of data. And unless you store this variable in a variable outside a function call, essentially putting it on the heap, Unity will not serialize it for inspection. But that's where Visual Studios comes in and where our video begins. Usually, you see people doing a bunch of print lines to see a variable within a for loop or just within a function. They would do something like print test int, which yes, this works, but it takes longer than what you would need to do and makes it more complicated to scroll through the console to see the value that you've been looking for. If instead, we would go into Visual Studios, remove our print line, and put a breakpoint on our line by either clicking the gray area, pressing F9 on the keyboard with the line selected, or right clicking breakpoint, insert breakpoint, we can then attach our debugger to Unity, go back into your Unity program and click the play button, and you will see that Visual Studios will pause when reaching the breakpoint. Now that Visual Studios has paused, you'll have access to your local variables within your local screen. You can see that i is equal to 0 and test int is equal to 1. If you click continue, it will walk through this for loop until passing the breakpoint. You'll see that your test int and i go up each time we click continue. If we keep going until i is equal to 10, you'll see that the program goes back and recontinues. You can also set up conditions on your breakpoints by going to the settings menu of your breakpoint. The conditions that you can use are is true and when changed. If we click when changed and put test int, which is the value that we will be checking if changed or not, and then go back into your Unity editor and click play, that breakpoint will not fire until your test int changes. Our test int currently is equal to 1, so the breakpoint will not fire until test int is equal to 2. As you can see here, our i is now 2 and our test int is 2. Clicking continue, you can see our values increasing. Once reaching 10, our program will continue. Some other things that we can do is if you stop your debugging, remove your breakpoint, I'll unline this code that I typed earlier, we can set up more breakpoints. Let's set up a breakpoint to fire at the beginning of this function and then another breakpoint to fire at the end of this function. Reattach your editor to Unity, wait for your code to compile, then click play, you'll see our first breakpoint should fire at the beginning of the test2 function, then our second breakpoint should fire at the end of the test3 function. Our breakpoint fired, and now if we click continue, our game should run for about 2 seconds, then our next breakpoint fires. You can also set up conditional statements on these breakpoints. Another thing you can do is within the call stack, you can right click on functions and insert breakpoints this way. This function is not available to be set up with a breakpoint, but if we had one, that would be doable. You can also right click and go to source code to see the source code that is running that function or breakpoint. 
One other useful thing this can be used for is if we remove these breakpoints, we can just go ahead and line out this test function. We will add in this thing that I wrote earlier. I'll actually just go ahead and replace all of this with this, then unline it. In Unity, normally this would not be serializable even if it is public. If we save this and go into our Unity project and look at our file, after it compiles, you'll see that you can still not see this. Even if you enter debug mode, it is not visible. So, one more good thing that Visual Studio's debugger can be used for is if we add a breakpoint at the end of our test function, we need to re-add our start in to run the test. Then, if we add a breakpoint for when this completes, we'll be able to visualize what is inside of TestINT using Visual Studios. Let's compile our code, go back into Visual Studios, attach it to Unity, go back into Unity after it's done attaching, click play, And you'll see that we should now be able to see what our test INT is by going into this. We have our test INT, which is an array. Some have zeros, ones, twos, threes, fours, six going down. This seems to have worked. I hope you've learned something from this video. If you did, please consider liking and subscribing. It would really help out my channel. Have a wonderful day.